Today I'm going to show you how to quickly paint shields using Collard of Garamond as an example. Collard was a great character from the books and everybody loves that classic blue and red Batonian scheme. So let's get after it. I'm actually going to start with the back of the shield. And we're going to do a rough coat of Wraithbone here as a base. And when I say rough, I mean I want to see brush marks. There seems to be a lot of confusion online of what the back of the shield should be made of, what a shield is made out of. Um, historically, they were made out of wood. A full metal shield would be way too heavy uh, to actually use to any effect. So most European shields were made of wood, but usually had a band of metal or leather around them. So we are going to use a contrast paint to make it look like wood. I've seen a lot of people also just paint these black, and that's okay too. But if you look at these knights from a certain angle, you can still see the back of the shield. So I like to do them in this dark wood that I'm about to show you. Once that's dry, we're going to go over it with a coat of this wild wood. This is a very dark brown. Um, I don't like to use light wood here just because it's all in the shadow and it shouldn't be light at all. I want the coat to be a little thin. I want to move my brush in one direction. And what this should do over the rough coat you just did with the wild wood is you almost get a grain effect here to make it look like wood planks. This isn't going to win you a golden demon or anything, and it doesn't quite look right if you get up close to it. But when this is against your knight and people are just looking at it, you know, where it's dark, where they can barely see any of it, it looks pretty good. While that dries, I'm going to do some iron hands here for the metal handle. It doesn't really matter what metallic you use, just something realistic. This part's really hard to see. I wouldn't bother highlighting it or anything like that. Just get a nice base color on and that's going to be good. Once that's dry, we're going to flip it over and hit it with the base coat of this Mephiston Red. If you're using multiple tones here, like you're doing a split heraldry field, you want to paint with your lighter color first and go over top of it with your darker color, the color that's going to cover easiest. The red and blue here are about the same, it really doesn't matter, but say if your heraldry was doing black and yellow, you would want to do the base coat of yellow first and then go over it with black because covering black with yellow is very hard to do. So just put some thought into it, think it out, and generally you want your lighter color first and then your darker colors on top of that. These coats are pretty thin, we still got some black seeping through so we'll just let it dry for a little bit, put another layer on until we get a nice solid color. To help keep a straight line, we're going to use this painter's tape here, this modeling tape. And I'm going to do the bare side with this McCrag blue. Um, the paint's going to help you do a straight line if you don't trust yourself to do it. But it's not perfect, especially with the brush. It's easy for that paint to seep through underneath. So don't treat it as invincible. Just be careful around the edges and get a nice solid blue on this half of the shield. And then we'll go on to the next step. Next, for the metal rim, we're going to use this iron hand steel. This is just a good base color for any kind of metal you're doing for your Bretonia army. If you don't have a pot, I definitely recommend it. And then I'm just going to very carefully do the rim of this shield. If you find it easier to do the rim first, so you can do it kind of sloppy, you can be messy about it, and then cover over it with the heraldry, that could work. Um, you do you. I just personally find it a lot easier to paint the lower parts first and then very carefully do the raised parts.
once dry, we're going to give everything a real heavy douse of this gnome oil. The idea ultimately by the time we're done is we get to this heavy wash here. Then we raise the main colors up back again and then leave kind of the darkness a little bit in the middle where the colors change and then a little bit on the outside. It's going to add some depth to the shield. So once that's dry, we start off going over with this McCrag blue. I know it looks very messy now, but just wait till we get these colors brought back up. Just kind of bear with me. And we're being very careful here. We want to get close to the edges, but we don't want to do it 100%. We want the darker color, the ones we just covered with known oil to come through along the edges. So just very slow, very methodical, very carefully. Bring up the bulk of the shield back to its color, but leave those edges dark. And no surprises here, we're doing the exact same with the Mephiston Red. And this method is kind of nice. It's a little different than say the heavy metal method that Warhammer uses. Um, they would use a lot of edge highlighting here and you'd have to do a higher color and just get those lines really straight down the middle where you have the two colors split off. And that looks really great if you can do it. But I personally, my hands are a little shaky. I don't trust myself to always make those kinds of straight lines. And so this kind of method just works better for me and I still think it produces a really good result by the time we're done. So you can kind of start to see it now. The shield doesn't look as flat anymore. It's got some low lights, some highlights, some color transition. It looks much better than just the flat red and blue. We're close to being done. Now I'm just gonna go back over it with this Rune Fang Steel. Um, Mithril Blade by Two Thin Coats is another good option. Basically just any metallic, silver metallic, that's lighter than what you use. Probably a couple tones lighter. And we're just going to very carefully hit the edges on the tops and the top half of the side and those three circular notches along the corners and bottom. I'm not going to go all the way down. Um, a lot of people do. Uh, Warhammer themselves, I mean, their in-house painters are amazing and they do really heavy edge lighting everywhere. I just, I just try to avoid edge highlights where I don't think as much light would get through. So I basically just do the top half, maybe 60% of the shield and leave the rest unhighlighted. All that's really left now is the heraldry. We need some microsol and microset. I wouldn't recommend doing any kind of water slide transfers without these. It just makes it look so much better. And they're not that expensive. It lasts a long time. I've had the same, you know, two bottles for like three years. Um, so first I'm gonna put on some microsol um, and that's supposed to soften the decal. Then the decal itself, put it in water and get it to come off and then carefully brush it onto your shield. Collard has a white dragon on his heraldry and unfortunately the Bretonia transfers only had a red dragon. So I had to get this one online off of Etsy. I will leave a link in the description. I will say this guy seems to use an inkjet printer and not a laser jet printer. 
And what that means is only his white heraldries and his black heraldries are going to be opaque. Unless printed on black paper, his reds, his blues, his yellows, his other colors will not look great unless you put them over white. So you know, fair warning. But once you've got that on, um, get it right in the place you want. Use a paper towel to pick up any excess that micro saw or any water. We don't want it at the pool there. We want it to be fairly dry now. And for the last step, we're going to take this micro set and we're going to put it on our brush and we're going to cover a layer of our um, water transfer with that. What that's going to do is it's going to help melt the water transfer to the, the paint and conform to the ridges, the curves and stuff. So it looks almost painted on. Um, it'll help a lot. And then once this is dry, this is good. You want to use a coat of some kind of varnish, a clear coat, which will help take the shine off and attach it to the night because you have your shield done and I think it looks really good for the amount of effort we put into it. Again, thanks for watching. I love seeing your guys' comments. Let me know if this helped you or if I pronounced Collard wrong. I'm sure you guys will let me know. Either way, man, leave a comment.